Yo, what's up you guys, Nasdaq here. So last week, Elon gave a Starship presentation and there were some incredible updates. So if you don't wanna spend the whole hour watching that video, here are the highlights. So of course, the entire point of Starship is that it's fully and rapidly reusable. Now, a lot of people think Falcon 9 is actually reusable, but that's not true. Only the fairing and the booster are reusable, with the second stage being expendable. But Starship is aiming to be completely reusable since the booster can return to the launch site within six minutes of launching and Starship, of course, can just belly flop back to Earth. Now, this is really cool. Elon said that once the booster has landed, it can be refueled within 30 minutes of landing. So it can be ready to launch within like an hour of landing. And because Starship has to orbit around Earth before it can come back to land, he predicts that it'll be around every six to eight hours that a Starship ship can be used since it needs to deploy its payload, then come back to Earth. Starship is the top, booster is the bottom is how I'm referencing these. So we wanna like put these goals for Starship in context, right? So for reference, the total mass ever launched from Earth to orbit has only been 15,517 tons. Only, maybe that's a lot, maybe that's a little, but with Starship being able to launch between 100 to 150 tons with this configuration, if they can figure out how to launch three times a week, Within one year, Starship will be able to do 15,500 tons, which is the total mass that's ever been put to orbit in one year. That's crazy. And so then Elon was giving these numbers. And so if they figure out how to scale Starship launching three times per day, then that's 109,500 tons to Earth orbit in a year which is seven times more than has ever been launched in the history of mankind. Okay, so the bigger vision is if they scale to 10 starships launching three times a day, that's 1,095,000 tons per year to Earth orbit, which is just crazy. Now, of course, if we wanna to go to Mars, then it's around 10% of that mass can be actually like going to Mars because you have to refill the boosters and everything like this. So then that's about 100,000 tons to Mars per year. Now, of course, Elon estimates that we need around a million tons to Mars to make it self-sustaining. So roughly 10 years at these 10 starship capacity numbers, but that's super rough. It doesn't take into account like Mars two-year orbits or the starship program continuing to scale. Now, one of the biggest barriers for Mars and the starship program is, is orbital refilling. And so, in, and, and I'm not saying that wrong. Elon was adamant that it's refilling and not refueling because most of the filling that's going on is oxygen, not propellant. But anyways, he predicts that this should be tested late next year or maybe early 2024, which is actually relatively soon considering they can do a lot in between that. Like they can still launch Starlink satellites without needing orbital refueling. Filling. Refilling. It's still, I'm still used to saying refilling. Refueling. Oh my God. Uh, anyways, now for the Raptor engine, this is what the Raptor 2 engine improvements look like. As you can see, they deleted a lot. And Elon mentioned they specifically converted a lot of the flanges to welds because Elon just hates flanges. We uh, converted a bunch of flanges to welds. Um, uh, and we, we're actually, over time, we'll convert even more flanges to welds. I hate flanges. And the main issue right now for Raptor 2 is the high temperatures melting the chamber. But even with this, they've already increased the thrust from Raptor 1 to Raptor 2 from 185 tons to 230 tons. As well, they increased the number of Raptor engines on the booster from 27 to 33. So now Starship is 17 million pounds of thrust, which is more than twice as much as the Saturn V rocket, which had seven and a half million pounds of thrust. And that was the largest, most powerful rocket ever flown. So like, it, it's like these numbers are just insane. Okay, so like an, an interesting question that was asked was, how, how do you scale life support for Starship? And so it turns out that four trips of less than two weeks, they're actually just planning to scale the Dragon life support systems. But for trips longer than two weeks, they'll need to create like a completely new life support system because it needs to start reusing the materials that are in the ship. Now, lastly, one of the roadblocks is regulation, of course. And so the FAA is still performing their environmental reviews for when Starship can do its orbital launch. And it seems like this should be approved by March. And and Elon was also saying, we plan to have the orbital flight hardware ready by then. Fingers crossed, we might actually get an orbital flight in like April. 
Otherwise, Starship is also getting approval to fly at Cape Canaveral to launch from Pad 39A. And so if there are further FAA or regulation problems in Texas, SpaceX is planning to just move primary operations to Cape Canaveral. It'll take like a few, like eight months, Elon said, to scale this up. It's good to see that they have the redundancy there. And then also, speaking of other launch pads, they've deprioritized this, but they're starting to like bring it back up. They deprioritized the sea launch systems but they are building a catch tower on these sea launch platforms right now. And eventually soon they're going to build launch capabilities on the sea launch platforms. So they have two of these and Elon thinks that like point to point travel or just like general sea launch might be better than from South Texas or 39A. Anyways, those were to me the most important things that happened during the Starship presentation. If I missed anything, which I'm sure I did, just sauce it in the comments. But it's really incredible to see the progress that Starship has made in a relatively short time period since the first Starship presentation just over two years ago. I mean, I remember that was actually his a 2019 Starship presentation was actually my first like viral TikTok. It was like recapping that. And it's really cool just to see like how far he's come in that time and how, how things have changed. Well, you know, there's COVID and all that stuff, but you know, I'll try to be optimistic. Anyways, I can't wait to see the future of Starship. It really feels like it's starting to happen. And I think with this orbital flight, it's really, it's really going to really feel like we're in a new space age. And I can't wait for that. I, Nasdaq out. Have a good one. Peace.